What happens if or when there's a virus more deadly than COVID? You could be infected anywhere in the world and you need to get home. For more than 40 years, the Royal Air Force has maintained an aeromedical evacuation facility on behalf of the government. The Air Transportable Isolator, or ATI, of which we have 10, together with the Deployable Air Isolator team, exists to transport patients with highly infectious diseases back to the United Kingdom. The ATI is transported in the wonderfully named Jumbulance, a giant ambulance, and flown by either A400M, C17 or C130 to the site of the patient. In the past 10 years, all but one of 17 evacuated patients have survived, and today a brand new cohort are being trained to become part of the team. Ladies and gents, that's us beginning our descent. Uh, we'll be on the ground in about uh, 30 minutes. The recce team will go out to collect the patient, OK? Um, I'm going to keep the main, the main party on here with the ATI until the very last minute almost. We are tasked because... from the government um, to collect patients. Um, we could get mobilised within 24 hours, so we are kind of looked upon as, as the specialists in this, in this movement of, of patients. If you see anything in the news, you think, oh gosh, we might be used. Um, but I wouldn't say that there's, there's pressure because we're, we're all so well trained and we, we do so many um, exercises, you know, and we feel very confident in our roles that we do. This is the line, this line. Okay. okay. So green, yep. amber, red. You have to kind of put on a, a, a brave face for the team. And I think if you show panic or worry, then the team will pick up on that. I'm used to going in and out of, of um, rooms with patients with high consequence infectious diseases or sort of weird and weird and wonderful pathogens. And I think you you focus on the patient at hand and you, you look at how potentially scared they might be, how vulnerable they might be, and you home in on that and you make them feel as comfortable as possible. So that helps me deal with any of my anxieties or worries about the, the disease, really. As you can see, we have the biohazard tape down, okay? So this biohazard tape is your clean, dirty line. Or as Tori said, this is your working area, this is your rest area, okay? So the scenario that our, our first shift are gonna go through is the, the patient actually has some sharps on them. So it's really important within the air transportable isolator that people don't have sharps in there. It's obviously a bubble um, made of plastic, so it's really easy to, to create any kind of breach um, potentially causing disease transmission. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our trainees to bus um, the, the sharps out of the ATI. It's difficult. I mean, your dexterity, your vision, it is all slightly impaired, but it's a great way that we can get really quite, quite immersed and be close to the patient. It is workable and it, it's a good piece of equipment. Literally anyone who's going through those decontamination lines, they, they are not allowed to do anything until they're told. Um, and it's really, really important because all evidence has shown that doffing PPE is actually the riskiest part of, of any kind of PPE usage. It's about making sure that we do things very slowly and in a very controlled manner. Um, everything that we do with this, whether it's the decontamination process, the loading onto the aircraft, is all done very slowly, very controlled. We work in a systematic order in order not to contaminate the clean area. It's so easy for one of my team to just touch something when they shouldn't or to go across a line when they shouldn't. So I think you have to have situational awareness, which is something I had to really learn to, to have, to come into a new environment and be on an airfield that's noisy or hot or to go on the back of an aircraft. You have to have eyes everywhere. I think that's why um, we as military nurses are heads above we are expected to act within that exercise role or within that deployable environment so we can thank the NHS that we can work there and we learn a lot from them but then we exercise and we take it to the next level. I think the pandemic has really um, brought infection prevention and control to the forefront of people's minds especially within healthcare. It was always there and it should always be one of the first things you think about in nursing but people shy away from the subject when actually we're just common sense. We don't know what's going to come next and um, people become quite lax especially with infection control. All that the pandemic has done is thought you don't know what's coming next, you don't know what virus is coming next. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.